writing text for music has become a very, very particular thing in, in my practice. Not intentionally, it's kind of crept up on me, but now that I've noticed it, I can run with it more deliberately, I suppose. There's, there's usually a story behind the way that I find text. One of the very first choral pieces I wrote is called Bundle of Joy. And again, I was looking for text. I didn't, couldn't find something that I really wanted to set. And I remembered that I had read a 50 word um, winning uh, poem in, in the Age newspaper where they'd run a comp competition. So the story, the 50 word story, is, is about a, a lady who gets her winter coat out of, the, out of the cupboard, having been there all summer. She puts her hands into the pocket and massages the bundle of rubber bands there, which actually turns out to be a spider. Said a lot more eloquently than that, but that's what the choral piece is. And it's just got this little lovely twist at the end. And it gave me such a kick to find that text, to set it, to add to it, that I think then uh, every other piece I've written, there, there is a story about how I find, find the text. Words and music have a particular relationship for me. So when I'm looking at words and thinking, how can I add to it? I'm thinking beyond, what I'm really thinking about is how I can say something perhaps unpalatable to an audience in a palatable way. So it's adding a third or fourth layer or dimension, hopefully. I mean, this is what you're always hoping that you can somehow do. So words of wisdom, for example, some of the words are frivolous and silly, and some are just a bit naughty. Words of wisdom is a set of nine vignettes and the text comes from newspapers, it comes from old ancient Chinese sayings, it comes from TV shows, Aristotle, a whole collection of unusual doormats, even newspaper ads, um, and yet they come together and form a, a, a quite succinct set. So how can I get an ABC audience to happily be listening to a broadcast about bum cracks? That's my challenge, which I love those challenges and I kind of set them up for myself, perhaps. It's, it's the same in hidden thoughts. Some of these women have extremely difficult thoughts um, for me to hold. Um, one, of the, one of the texts is, everyone says to me, it's time to move on, he's still sad. But that's the thing about grief. If one stays with it, one is wallowing, stuck, not moving on, needing antidepressants. And it's a bit sarcastic and a bit grief-stricken. And I had to really sit and hold that not only equal the gravity and um, beauty of what she'd said, but somehow allow an audience to hear it in a way that's not um, too judgmental. So maybe that's what music can add. It adds, it, it adds space and time for reflection where conversation can't give that same amount of time without adding awkwardness, for example. It's what's behind the words that I want the audience to be able to reflect upon. So part of it is giving them enough space in the music to do that. So it's about repeating lines to to help that sink in, but it's also about not having word, not churning through words from beginning to end. I tend to use a small amount of words for, for pieces. In fact, this choral piece I'm talking about had literally just 50 words, and that just seemed too many for that particular piece. But less is more for me, because I feel that I can then create space instrumentally as well, and with silence and, and space in order to give the audience space to reflect upon what they're hearing, what they're about to hear, to have time to digest the words, have a reaction, note their reaction and be prepared to hear the next line. I used to read a lot of poetry looking for text and, and not find words that I felt that I could add to. But it was always when I came across something a little unusual or perhaps words that you wouldn't necessarily expect to use as text, that I would have a, 
an idea or a vision about how I could use that in, in music. And that seems to be this sort of upside down approach. Um, Brenton Broadstock often describes it as bumping into text. And I've, I've often felt that that's how I've come across it. I've, I've bumped into it rather than set out to find it deliberately. And now I go about deliberately bumping into text and I've tried to set up processes for myself to bump into the types of text that I would like to set. That, that's the fun of it for me. I love trying to find that intersection between words and music. How can the music add? How can the, how can the music help the listener hear not only the words but what's behind the words?